And all of which he started pitching. James Randall, who will head in his way to third. Not lightly jogging over there. <laughs> and here comes Johnny Stevenson as he'll step into the box. It's always fun to see how different coaches run around the base paths. I remember. Um, Oh, who was it? Uh, I'm trying to think who it was from last week. First pitch to Stevenson's going to be inside for ball one. Was it Choker? No, no, it was the uh, the Bentley coach. The one zero, and that's going to be in the dirt for ball two. I don't remember what his name was. He he was he was. Uh, oh oh, the forty four yeah, year the, the forty nine yeah. year guy. He he was he, he could really move up and down the up and down the field, you know. A lot of credit to him. So the two out to Stevenson, and that's going to be low for ball three. So this is the first time that Sakani's been behind three zero today. And three zero to Stevenson, and that's going to be in there for strike one. Three one to Stevenson, and that's going to be low for ball four, and he'll take the base and be the first base runner of the day for Claflin. Well, there goes the perfect game. <laughs> Jeez, I was hoping for something special today. Very early to, to start thinking about stuff like that. No, never too early. <laughs> so Christopher Gilling on the right fielder will come to bat. Not many of these hitters for Claflin. Above 200 in the batting average. As that's going to be in there for strike one. Jesse Minters, 273. Jabari Brown's 396. Rogers is 317. And Jalen Thompson's 250. The rest are sub two. And pickoff attempt to first. He's back in there in time. And Gilliam's one of the, the worst hitters on the team right now. 125 through 11 games played. Him and Morley share that 125. And pick up a temp at first. Got him leaning, but the throw was a little bit too high. So good move from Sakani. And the 0-1. That's going to be in there for strike two. Sounded like I had some nice velo on it, didn't it? Hear the, the smack of the catcher's butt from up here. February 21st, 2016. Pick up attempt to first. But Stevens is back in there in time. Gilliam batting 176 with runners on. And EO2. That one's in the dirt. Corbett stops it and is ready to throw, but Stevenson wasn't even thinking about it, as he shouldn't. Looked like he was he was taking a, a bit of a lead off of first there again as the pitch went. And the one two. Ground ball to the third base side. Ashline gets out in front of it, but it chops off his glove too far. And everybody's gonna be safe, so we'll see what they rule that. I'm assuming an error on Grant Ashline. Took a bit of a weird hop in front of Ashline. It's good that he was able to stop it from getting out into the outfield. But nice job not getting picked first up, error Johnny. First for the Tars. And what's interesting about those is Ashline, every time a ball seems to be coming at a speed or at a hop of like that, he seems to jump to try to catch the hop, but it always hits off his ankle. Yeah, I have noticed that. And Mr. Ferguson, Burns. the pitcher's going to put a beautiful bunt down. The throw to first is in time. The runners will advance to second and third. But Ferguson 
doing a pitcher's job, sacking people over with one out, and he gets the job done. So there's his first at bat of the year. Is that even considered an at bat though? It, it won't be. Yeah, not, no. The question is, will Ferguson have the luxury of having two runners on or a runner on with no or one out every single at bat today? So we'll see how that goes. And the leadoff hitter, Jesse Minner, will come to bat. The first pitch to him is right down the middle for strike one. Double plays not in effect here with runners on second and third. So Skinny's got to just go after this guy. And the 0 one's going to be in there for ball one, so the count will go even. Jesse Minter, not a very good hitter with runners on or in runners in scoring position. Point ninety one with runners on and 143 with runners in scoring position. And he's in a big spot here, the 1-1. That one's ripped to second base. That'll get a run in. But there will be two outs in the inning, and the, there will be the first run on the board for Claflin as the score goes 3-1 to one in favor of the Tars. At that point, I mean, you kind of got what you you wanted if you're Sakani. You got a ground ball. I'm sure he would have wanted a, a strikeout in that situation, but take what you can get. Well, Three-run lead, you'll take it out for a run, especially with another runner in scoring position for Jabari Brown, who is the best hitter on this Claflin team, as that one's in there for strike one. Good curveball. Got him leaning backwards, thinking it was coming at him. So Jabari Brown, the complete opposite of most of these hitters on this team, he's batting 400 in most of his different types of averages, including on-base percentage, slugging, runners on, runners in score position, and with two outs, all in the 400s. His batting average on the year is 388. Struck out looking in the first, and the 1-1, swing and a miss for strike two. That one got away from Corbett a bit, but I don't think the runner was going to test that. With two outs, you probably wouldn't, because if anything, you're hoping your best hitter on your team will get something through. And you never want to be that last out at home. The one-two. That one's going to be in the dirt as well. Good stop by Corbett. So a few control issues here for Sikani. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's been his uh, his downfall at the towards this point of the year. See if he can come back with this one. Two-two. And inside corner, strike three, and Sikani gets out of the inning. Gave up a one run as Claflin will put one on the board. But the Tars still maintain a 3-1 lead as we head to the bottom of the third. 